In the 1940s, Ansel Adams and Fred Archer revolutionized large format black and white photography with an innovative concept they called the zone system. The system included elaborate procedures for materials testing and described a unique method for appraising and compensating for variations in subject contrast. It stressed the importance of pre-visualization, the process of comparing the subject tonality with a mental image of the desired print tones, and offered technical controls to help the photographer achieve the visualized print result. With only minor modifications, the zone system has persisted to this day as standard operating procedure for the majority of large format photographers. BTCS, Beyond the Zone System, incorporates most of the zone system's principles and takes advantage of modern electronic devices to refine and extend them. Instead of tedious empirical testing procedures, we use densitometers to simplify and refine the tests and computer programs to derive a great deal of useful information from the test results. We also install this unprecedented wealth of working information into pocket-size personal digital assistants, such as the Palm or IPAC, so that we can access the data with a few keystrokes. The virtue of this approach is that it allows the photographer to forget technical concerns in the field and concentrate completely on selecting and interpreting the subject, confident that the working information provided by the PDA program will take care of the technical details of exposure and development. BTCS and the zone system have a lot in common. In fact, zone system users can work with BTCS methods and data with only slight changes in their traditional procedures. For example, the concept of zones of tone and the use of spot meters to measure subject luminance values are fully compatible with BTCS. For those situations where spot metering is not practical, BTCS provides an alternative metering method based on illuminance measurement with an incident meter. This method allows for the same creative control of image tonality that zone system users are accustomed to. In fact, the two metering methods complement each other nicely, and we encourage users to learn both. Now here's a brief review of these two approaches to efficient metering. The zone system divides the subject range into equal regions of gray and identifies them using Roman numerals. Black and white are accent tones. In the subject range, by traditional definition, zones and stops are equal. So the normal seven stop subject must contain seven zones, plus the accent tones of black and white. The famous Old Weston Master Exposure Meter dial defined the normal subject range as seven stops and labeled its boundaries with the letters U for underexposure and O for overexposure. It considered the middle of the range to be three stops down from the highlight boundary and four stops up from the deep shadow boundary. This middle gray value indicated by the normal pointer represents approximately 12% reflectance, not the 18% of the familiar gray card. Some photographers regard the normal range as including zones 1 through 8, but that makes 8 complete zones, not the standard 7. If black and white are included as zones, the total is 10, and the middle gray, indicated by the normal pointer as zone 5, is then about 9% reflectance. Zones are ranges of tone, not specific single grays. Each zone gray we visualize is the average value of all the grays included within that zone range. The tones we've learned to associate with the various zones are really print grays, and that's a little confusing because every full-scale print, that is every print that contains black and white accents, must by definition represent the full seven zone range. But some printing papers can't reproduce seven stops of reflection density. For example, Platinum prints, which we may perceive to be full-scale images, can barely attain a five-stop reflection density range, including maximum black and paper white. But that's okay. We can accept a photograph as having a satisfactory full scale of tones, even when its real reflection density range is less than the normal seven stops. In the print image, zones represent stops, 
but they're not often equal. When the subject range is normal, that is when stops and zones are equal, development is considered to be normal or n. The actual developing time represented by n is determined traditionally by a series of empirical tests. If the subject range is greater than normal, that is greater than seven stops, it must be compacted by reduced development. In this example, a nine stop range is compacted to seven. This requires n minus development, and in this case it could be called n minus two. If the subject range in stops is less than normal, greater than normal development is necessary to expand it. In this example, a five stop range is expanded to match the normal seven, and the extended development necessary to accomplish this might be called n plus two. But n numbers have no universal meaning because they can be calculated in different ways. For example, bringing EV14 into alignment with zone 8 to restore the 9 stop range to the normal 7 zones can be called n minus 2. But n minus 2 can also refer to shifting EV11 into alignment with zone 5. In this case, a 6 stop section of the total range is compacted into 4 zones so each zone will contain one and a half stops. The seven normal zones then contain a total subject range of ten and a half stops. Obviously development that's appropriate for a nine stop range will not be equally appropriate for a ten and a half stop range. Which one does N2 really refer to? It depends on which zones are used and who does the calculation. To reinforce the notion that visualized zones are really average values, the BTZS software calculates zone ranges using the center of each zone as its real value. That changes the calculations and gives the n numbers different meanings. Because of this ambiguity, we don't use n numbers at all. The ExpoDev software and the power dial both use average gradient values to describe appropriate development. N numbers are arbitrary and personal, and they typically relate to specific development times and specific materials. Average gradient values describe the development effect, so they're independent of materials types and procedures. For example, a recommendation of N minus 1 development is meaningless unless we know what materials and development methods are being referred to. An average gradient number, on the other hand, tells us exactly what degree of negative contrast is required, regardless of the materials or techniques we choose to employ. Except for the concept of n numbers, the zone system methods work well with BTCS. There are many subject types that can be spot metered effectively, and the principle of zone placement to produce a visualized gray tone in the print is theoretically sound. But zones are a moving target and different types of film, developer, and printing paper can render them very differently. Because the middle zones are affected most by these shifts, it's safest to work with the extreme zones 2 and 8 whenever possible. The incident meter's translucent dome transmits 18% of the ambient light to the sensitive cell underneath. That's two and a half stops down from white, and because this 18% is the average of the ambient light intensities, it's also safe to say that it's two and a half stops up from black. In other words, the incident meter sees a total range of five stops from black to white, two and a half stops on either side of 18% gray. Here's a puzzle for you. How can the man determine the distance between these two lamps if his extended arms span five feet? He might touch the left lamp, stretch five feet to the right, then measure the remaining distance and add it to five. Or he might touch the right lamp, stretch five feet to the left, then measure the remaining distance and add it to five. Or he might bisect himself, stretch two and a half feet in each direction to touch both lamps, then measure the distance between his halves and add it to five. This is the method we use to measure the subject luminance range with an incident meter. 
We essentially split the meter's range in half and take two incident readings, one in the shadow area of the subject and one in full light. The highlight half of the shadow reading and the shadow half of the highlight reading are ignored. The low reading includes textured black plus two and a half stops of dark gray, and the highlight reading includes textured white plus two and a half stops of light gray. In this illustration, the subject range comprises two and a half stops of shadows, two and a half stops of highlights, plus the two stop difference between the readings, measured from center to sender, for a total SBR of seven stops. Because the incident meter's own range is five stops, you can see that a single incident reading will represent both high and low readings, so the SBR is necessarily five stops. This very short range is usually appropriate for two-dimensional subjects in uniform illumination, but it will interpret three-dimensional subjects harshly, with probable loss of highlight or shadow detail, or perhaps both. If you want to increase contrast even more dramatically, you can shorten the range further by arbitrarily making the high reading lower than the low reading. In this illustration, that's been done, and the shadow and highlight readings overlap by one half stop. Subtracting the low EV from the high EV gives us a minus half stop, which added to five shows the subject range to be only four and a half stops. In practice, the ExpoDev program used in incident mode will accept high readings that are as much as two stops lower than the low readings. This arbitrary range adjustment is strong medicine that can be used creatively, but use it cautiously. Very few film developer combinations are capable of producing such extremes of image contrast. Longer ranges are calculated the same way. Subtract the low EV from the high EV and add the difference to 5. In this case, 2.5 stops of low values plus 2.5 stops of high values plus the 4.5 stop difference between the readings add up to a 9.5 stop SBR. By splitting the metered range this way, the ends of the scale are always controlled, and image gradation, the relationship of the middle values to the ends of the scale and to each other, is determined by the characteristics of the film, the film developer, and the printing paper. This is conceptually opposite from the zone system, which attempts to control two selected internal grays, leaving the ends of the scale to be controlled by materials characteristics.